I've got a plan for you. I have something that I want to shape you into. I, I, I know what I want to turn you into. Do you see this little pot right here? This is similar to what I want to turn you into. Well, the clay was really excited. Oh, yes, that's exactly what I want to be like. In fact, for this part, I need to move my Bible a little bit. <laughs> um, so the clay said, yes, yes, I want to be just like that. Well, let me say something, Clay. I said, I would like you to be like this, not exactly like that. I, I have an idea that I want to turn you into. Okay, okay. So the potter started wedging the clay. And the clay's like, well, what, what is this stuff? This is, well, this is getting you ready for what's coming later on. Oh, 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 that's enough. No, no, that's not enough because I need to get you really ready. But the clay wanted to force the hand of the potter and say, no, no, that's enough. Let's go right on to the next step. So the potter, okay, okay. So the potter took the clay and he attached it to the wheel and the clay was anxious. He was ready to become the pot. So the potter took the clay and started spinning him on the wheel and added some water and started shaping the clay. And the clay in anticipation goes, oh, this, this is good. This is really exciting. Uh, oh, that's enough. You're not even centered yet. But the clay said, no, 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 this, this is good. I'm ready. I, I know what's going on. I'm ready to go to the next step. So the potter said, okay, if you're ready for the next step. So the potter went to the next step. And you can all see what's coming. And so the potter started putting water on the clay. And as he's putting water on the clay, the clay said, wait a second, wait a second. Don't use so much water. It takes too much time. Let's just keep moving on. But the potter said, no, I need water to help me throw you on the wheel. But the clay said, no, let's not use water because that just takes too much time. Let's just get moving on with the next step. Okay, so the potter took his hand and he was trying to throw this wobbly piece of clay. And, and he's just pulling it out like this. He's working with it and the clay's like, oh, hurry, hurry. But this is a little harder piece of clay because you told me not to use water and you wanted me to get to you here. No, no, that's okay. I, I want to become like him. I want to become like that pot right there. It's, it's my image. I, this is what I want to do. So the potter started pulling him up. And as he's pulling him up, the clay says, isn't this a little slow? Can't you speed that wheel up? No, no, I know the speed of the wheel. And the clay said, let's speed up because I want to get there faster. Are you sure? Well, so the clay sped up. Oh, oh man. He fell apart. And the clay looked at himself and realized he'd made a mess of his life. And he looked at the potter. He goes, I'm so sorry. I was trying to do everything myself. I was trying to tell you how to go. Potter, can you possibly forgive me? And the potter said, yes, definitely I can forgive you. Do you have a listening heart now? And the clay was like, can't get much more broken than this. The clay says, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to listen. But is there any hope? There's a lot of hope. In fact, 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You see, the piece of clay looked for the forgiveness and said, you know, I made a mess. And I'm so thankful for this clay today because there's so many times in my life where I've tried to force the hand of God instead of follow the hand of God. The clay was trying to force my hand and saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I want to go through the steps again the right way. But he looked for forgiveness. He had a listening ear now. Okay, piece of clay, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, do you, are you sure you have a listening ear? And the clay's like, definitely, I have a listening ear. What, what does it take? Well, the first thing it takes is this is something I wanted to turn you into, but this is not what I wanted you to look like exactly. I have a different plan for you. Let's put this away, and this time, instead of looking at that piece of clay, you keep your eyes on me. And the clay realized, you know, there needs to be a correction of direction here. Instead of looking vertically at other things, it needs to keep its eyes 
up on the potter. Isn't it amazing that we need to keep our eyes up on God when we start looking at things around us and getting anxious? So this is, the potter said, okay, we're going to start over again. Let's take a look, really, or just, just a few thoughts. In the Bible, was there anybody that had to go through a testing time? Let's go to the Old Testament. How about Abraham? A hundred years old before his son was born? <laughs> How about Moses? Forty years in the wilderness taking care of sheep before he led God's flock? How about Daniel going into exile? and being tested in a lion's den. But the one I really like to look at is Peter. Praise the Lord for Peter, because now there's hope for me. You know, I mean, the thing is, is Peter, he had a big mouth. And that's my hope, because see, I'm a teacher. I have a big mouth. In fact, see, I'm sitting here, you're all listening to me today, I've got a big mouth. But the thing that happens is that Peter repeatedly did some things that I would have done. Number one, he tried to tell God how to run his life. You know, he said, Jesus, you're not going to go to the cross. And Jesus had to confront him and say, get behind me, Satan. He said, Peter, let me tell you how it is. Another time, he's on the mountain transfiguration, and he wakes up, sees Jesus, Elijah, and Mo- Moses all standing there glowing. He's like, this is really good right here. Let's build three tents for you. Why would you build three tents to contain God's glory? But he didn't know what he was saying, and then God had to say, this is my son who I'm well pleased with, listen to him. And then Peter, when he went, just before Jesus died, Jesus said, Peter, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter says, no, no, God, let me tell you how it is. And he said, I won't do that, and he did. Well, that's pretty broken. That is pretty broken. Because then after Jesus resurrected, he found Peter. And I could just see that eye-to-eye contact where Jesus is sitting down with Peter just before he goes back to heaven. And he says, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He says, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. The third time, the breaking time, the time where the air bubbles came out. Peter, do you love me? Broken heart. Jesus, you know my heart. You know I love you. Feed my sheep. He went on to become a great vessel for God's kingdom. Do you see what I'm doing right now, a piece of clay? What I'm doing is I'm taking and breaking this, I'm breaking the tendency of you on the inside. There's air bubbles in there that if you listen closely, you could hear pop pop, pop, as I'm turning this clay over, bringing these air bubbles out. Then the clay asks, but why do you need these air bubbles out? Because there's a firing, a firing very soon in the next few weeks. Well, what's wrong with the air bubbles? Well, if you have air bubbles inside you, you will blow up. Wow, well, that's something. And I want to give you every chance why you should make it through that firing. So the pot, this piece of clay said, I guess this isn't so bad after all. And so I was getting all the air out of this little piece of clay, and he was trusting me. In fact, that's something that I would say over and over again. Clay, do you trust me? Yes. Yes, I trust you. Now, something else. Would you say that the clay is going through a trial right now? It looks like something's happening to it. Okay, James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And you see, what happens is these trials that you're facing, little piece of clay, are made to make you, not break you. Huh, so there's different kinds of trials. Yes, The ones that God allows to come into my life are there to make me, not break me. And so the clay was all mixed up, ready to go. Isn't it interesting? We need this process. We need this aging process. Oh boy, sometimes we want to force the hand of God and say, let's go, let's go, let's go. But God says, no, there's time. There's just foundation in time. And it's time to build that foundation. So the patience with God and to follow the hand of God 
is much more important than forcing the hand of God. So, a little piece of clay, we're ready. I think I've got you wedged up pretty good. <sighs> oh, another verse. Psalm 40, verse 2. Let me show you this. This is a really good visual Im- uh, illustration of this. Psalm 40, verse 2. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. So if you take clay out, I, I don't think you can get much more slimy than this stuff. This is clay. And out of the mud and mire, he lifted me and set my feet on a solid place. Do you see that that's now solidly on there? Okay, Clay, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I am going to, it looks like I'm spinning you, but this is all part of the throwing process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add lots of water. And I'm going to push down, and I'm going to pull you up. Do you trust me, Clay? And Clay said, yes, I trust you. Because it could see where it was coming from. It could see that on its own, it didn't do well. But trusting the potter, this time he realized There was something to be gained from somebody who knew what was going on. So he trusted the potter. The potter took the clay, pushed it down, brought it up. By the way, do you see all the pressure it takes? But this pressure isn't breaking the clay. This is making it. Then the potter pushed it it down again, and he brought it up. Piece of clay, are you keeping your eyes on me? Oh, yes. The clay was looking up. Even though it hurt, he was trusting the potter. By the way, do you all see what's happening now? Do you see how the clay's not wobbling as much, but it's much more in the center? This is an important part of the process. This takes time to get centered. Psalms 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. Isn't this amazing that this wheel can be spinning? But do you see how the clay is still this time? It's not wobbling anymore. Be still and know that I am God. And so what happens is a lot of times we might have a busy schedule, but there's still the ability to not be wobbling all around, but to be still. Now, little piece of clay. What you asked is that I not use as much water last time, but this time I'm going to use a lot of water. Let me explain something to you. You asked not to use water because it took too much time, but the water is essential because, you see, the water helps the process to become easier, to work with you instead of work against you. When I take the water away, you're going to resist me. Isn't that amazing? If I take this water away, the clay resists my work. There's friction. The changes will still come, but they don't come naturally. They don't come in a good way. But when I put the water on, this clay is actually no longer resisting me, but resting in the shaping process. It's not resisting it anymore. And I have come to realize that the the clay process is very much like our lives because we need to spend time in God's prayer, and in his word. Because that is just essential to our day. Think about it this way. If you spend time in God's word, not because you have to. I like what you said this morning that, that we get to be, give to our king. That we get to spend time with the king of all creation by spending time in prayer. By spending time in his word. It is a gift that we have that we take so lightly. Think about it. If I spend time in God's word, the events of my day will go much better. Not because I know what's going on, but because I'm resting in who does know what's going on. And I'm no longer resisting the change that's coming. Well, well, God, why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do this? But wait in expectation that this year I might find the reason, 10 years from now I might find the reason, or I might find it real soon. But God's my author. He is shaping me. And these are the verses I love for that. Here's Psalms 119, verse 105. Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Think about that. I don't put water on this thing to throw down the road. I don't put water on this thing to throw the whole thing, but just enough for that pulling process. But I do it all the time. Every day, we need to spend time. God's word is a light for our path. And then prayer. 
Ephesians 6.18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Isn't that cool? Then, it's so important through this whole process to use a lot of water. By the way, piece of clay, you know the first time we were throwing and you wanted me to step on the wheel and go faster? <laughs> that was not good. Do you, do you remember that? And the clay's like, yeah, yeah, I remember that one. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm keeping this, in fact, I might even slow the wheel down because the bigger you get, the more carefully you have to walk because there's a lot more to, to fall at that point. But you're taking shape. And as the potter threw, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Isn't that a beautiful verse? It talks about a designer knowing what's coming down the road. He says, oh, there's going to be hard stuff because it's not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. You see, everything that goes on with this piece of clay is, is to give it a hope and a future. I'm not just beating on this clay or just marring it, but I'm turning it into a beautiful vessel. And as I take this clay and I'm shaping it, I know the plans I have for it. But the old nature of this clay comes out at this point. He kind of comes back and says, <coughs> Potter, yes, clay? Uh, I really like what's going on right now. Well, thank you. Can I do it myself? Huh? Can I go ahead and take over the throwing process? I, I, I feel like I'm growing. Oh, sure. So the, clay, the potter sat, sat back and watched the clay spin at the wheel. Now you know, and I know, that nothing's going to happen. But the clay is trying real hard. And he sits there, and nothing happens. And he keeps waiting for something to happen, but nothing happens. Finally, the clay says, <coughs> Potter, yes, how come, how come nothing happens when, when I'm doing it myself and I was doing such a good job with you? No, no, says the potter. You have it backwards. I was doing a good job with you. It's a process of being humbled. In your pride, you want to do it yourself. But in humility, you have to let me do it for you. You see, there's too many times where you think what's going on in your life is part of your, your design, part of who you are but it's not. The only thing you have the ability to do is to fall down. Um, does it make sense? And the clay thought, yes. Yeah, it does make sense. All I can do is trust the potter. And do you see in Jeremiah 18 where the potter took that marred clay and rethrew it into a vessel that he thought best? And I just... I'm excited that God takes marred clay and reuses us. And so the potter kept shaping it, stretching it. In fact, James chapter 5, verses 7. It says, Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. Piece of clay, do you see how you're being, you have to be patient? As I work in your life, you might want that change a long time ago, but I'm bringing the change in the right time. And so the clay was like, yeah. And do you see, this piece of clay is a lot bigger than the one he wanted to become. Because that other one was a small vase. But this is a large storage jar. Has a lot more ability to do much more than he thought he could do. And so the potter took him and started to stretch him even more. Giving him volume. Pushing out where the sides, that piece of clay thought, oh my goodness, I've reached my limit. No, the potter knew how far he could be tested. 
And the potter took the clay and he shaped it. He said, I like a little transition right in here and work my design into it. And then the potter said, I want to bring a friend into your life. Oh, good. The piece of clay says, I like friends. Well, the potter had to explain something. Not all friends are the friends we want, but the friends that God brings are the friends we need. You see, this friend here in the clay looked at this and said, wait a second, that does not look like a friend. No, this is a pin tool. This friend's going to come into your life. He's going to take something away. But, but don't I need everything I have? No, everything you have doesn't serve a purpose. Like sometimes we need to let go in order to grow. Um, you see, on the altar of my life, if Jesus is there and I have too many things, sometimes they clutter up that altar and I can't see Jesus for all the things I have. Sometimes I need to get rid of things so that I can refocus on what's most important. You see, what's more important than all the things that you have or trying to learn with everything you have, how much can you learn to live with? It's not a good principle. But how much can you learn to live without? That's a good principle. So the potter took this, and boy, did it hurt the clay, but he went through and took this friend and cut off the top. And the clay's like, oh, I'm wrecked now. No, no, you're not wrecked now. In fact, you're even better than you were before because see that big piece of clay on the top needed to come off because I wanted to get your design right. And I got another friend. Oh, yay. Now this friend, this friend's here to be honest with you. Not all friends that you have are going to tell you the truth. In fact, not all friends are going to make you the pot that I want you to be. But this friend's very honest. He cares about you more than you care about yourself. In fact, he's going to come in and clean you up. Well, the pot at first was like, man, he is abrasive. He's got a personality I don't like. But you know what? After this person left, he was cleaner for it. And he's like, I guess if I had a problem, I guess I'd know I, who I'd talk to. And so this pot was like, well, this is kind of neat. In fact, here's an interesting verse, Proverbs 27, 6. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but, enemy, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Isn't it amazing that a friend can wound us and we're better for it? It's amazing. So be careful how you choose your friends, not just those who can give you good kisses, because that might not be good. Now, it doesn't mean that all kisses are bad, but it does mean that you've got to be careful who your friends are. And so the pot was trusting this potter, and he brought another friend into his life. And by now, the pot's realizing, yes, all these friends I need. And he went to start taking away something on the bottom, and he's like, wait, 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 I need that clay on the bottom. No, no, you want that clay on the bottom. Because you see, again, that firing that's coming down the road, not only are you going against air bubbles, but if you have too much clay on the bottom, again, you'll blow up. Oh, that blow up process. You know, the clay is like, well, what do I need to do? I need to get rid of that so that you are just the piece that I wanted you to be. Sometimes things disappear. Sometimes we need to let go. But we need to do that so that we're the person, the pot, the shape that you're designed to be. And the potter took this pin tool. One of his old friends brought him back into his life. The pot trusted the potter. And he took it off. And do you see how this pot became so much more than the first time? This time the pot didn't try to force the hand of the potter, but he followed the hand of the potter. And this pot became much more. Did you hear what I kept saying to the pot? Do you trust me? And the pot said, yes, I trust you. Ephesians 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths and he shall make the design for your life just what he has for it. It's fun to be able to share with you about clay, about how God works with us like a potter works with clay. And hopefully today you saw some correlations. And I don't think that everybody here is the rambunctious kind of guy that I am, but maybe there's parts of your life that you saw. That first, when the potter was trying to wedge up the clay, that the clay wanted to get right next to the next process. But there are times, seasons of life, that we need to trust God. Then there's times where we try to cut short our time with Jesus Christ in the day. 
and we find out that our day takes over our time with the Lord. When God wants that water to affect all our day, he wants us to spend time with him so that it has a profound effect on your day. And I dare say, whether you read through the Bible in a year or you're, you're going at it, but don't try to take on the whole Bible at once and say, I'm going to read it through, but spend time in God's word and let it build. Let it build. So that five years from now, you'll go, Ed, do you remember that day in the pottery talk? I've been spending time in God's word and my days have been going better because I'm falling in love with my king. I get to give to my king. I get to spend time with my king. I get to talk with my king. And things of the world, strangely, are disappearing, but my king's becoming much more. And let me tell you something, too. There's the relationship of Isaiah 64, 8. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. Isaiah 64, 8. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Isn't that the coolest relationship? God says, I want to put my hands on your life. He says, I don't want to just wind you up, set you out there, and let you go. But he says, I want to create you and shape and mold you. But what happened? Where did all this go wrong? Why is there this broken relationship today? I think it goes right back to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve went for a walk with God in the garden. And they chose to sin. And that snapped that relationship. That ripped it apart. Sin still separates us from God today. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I remember there was a guy when I was working on a construction crew. And he would help me memorize scripture. He was not a Christian, but he would help me memorize scripture. And I'd go, for most have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And he goes, no, no. For most have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No, no. I said, for most. He goes, not most. He says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all do. We all are that ornery piece of clay at the beginning. But Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, Jesus, this is as absurd, when Jesus came to this earth, as if I were to take Daniel and have him become a mug so that he could learn from fallen pottery to understand what it goes through, to understand it better for a heart of compassion. Jesus Christ came down, became a man, walked in a body, fully God, fully man, I don't understand it, but I know it happened. He died on the cross for me, rose from the dead, because you see, I sinned. I sinned. I broke that relationship, but God still wants to have that relationship where he can spend time with us. And that's what's beautiful. Let's go back to Ephesians uh, 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. There's something beautiful and something hard about that. The fact is, I can do nothing to earn my salvation. The only thing I can do is fall. But I can consent, say, Father, my life is yours. I accept your gift. But then it goes to Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. You see, this little piece of clay trusted my son enough to let it be thrown on the wheel. And it went through the whole process. And now it is doing good works that he's prepared for it to do, to take care of his dad. Thanks, John, for making this mug. Thanks, little mug. (laughs) And we are God's workmanship to do good works. That as much as I can't design this clay, uh, as much as I, as the piece of clay, can't, take over the potter's position. Once he's taken over my life, I want to serve him. And I want him to shape me to be used where he wants me to be. 